Hello and welcome to lesson 8 in the Python tutorial series. Uh, I'm Steve and today we're going to be looking at three different topics, while loops, blocks of code, and comments. Uh, blocks of code and comments are essential part of any program and we're, we're going to look at those two things through a while loop. And I kind of debated whether or not we were going to start with while loops or the if statement. Both of them are really important. They're used a lot in programs and they're kind of used together most of the time. So it's really hard to look at the two of them in isolation. Uh, I've got some ideas for what I want to do with the if statement lesson, but it's going to require knowing about the while statement before. So what we're going to look at today is while loops, blocks of code, and comments. Okay, to start off, I'm just going to go up here to the Python shell, and I'm going to write a simple while loop. We're going to talk about it in a second, what's going on, what it means, but there's some concepts that are really important in this first while loop that you're going to have to understand. So I'm going to say while, uh, the, well, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable x equal to 0. So now I have a value of 0 stored in the x variable, and I'm going to say while x is less than 10. You'll notice that the while turns orange. That lets me know that Python understands it as a command. But while x is less than 10 doesn't inherently do anything. We have to tell it what we want it to do while x is less than 10. You'll notice at the end of that line, I, I put a colon. What that colon notes to Python is that there's going to be a block of code coming next. When I hit enter, it doesn't execute anything. It simply goes to another line indented by four spaces. Typically, when I use the Python shell, as soon as I hit enter, the command executes. That colon tells Python we're not done with the command yet. So while x is less than 10, I want to print x, and then I want to add a value of 1 to x. So as it stands right now, the first time through, if x is 0, when I add 1, x is equal to 1. And when I execute that line of code, it prints out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then goes back to the shell. So it might be easiest right now to take the screenshot and put it in paint so we can do some notation and really look at what is a while loop doing and what is a block of code. So I've got the first thing that I did um, right over here. Oh, have to do something. Uh, right here is I initialized a variable. So x equals 0. The current value of x is 0. We are then going to look at a, this statement right here that says, while x is less than 10, I want you to do something. That is a comparison operator. While x is less than 10, it's going to evaluate x as less than 10, and that will evaluate to true. The block of code will only execute while the while statement is true. Once it's false, it will skip the block of code and move on to the next line. So let's draw our x right up here. And right now, x is equal to a value of 0. While x is less than 10, 0 is less than 10, therefore this is true. We're going to print x, which is right there. We're going to increment x by 1, so x no longer equals 0. Holy cow, I'm having all kinds of mouse problems today. x is no longer equal to 0, but x is equal to 1, and then we're going to come back up to the top of the while loop and evaluate again. Is 1 less than 10? It is. So what are we going to do? We're going to print 1. That prints right here. Then we're going to increment x by 1. So now x is going to be equal to a value of 2. Is 2 less than 10? It is. So we're going to print the value 2. And we're going to continue using that logic until we get down to, <clears throat> let's say, x is equal to a value of 9. We get all the way down here, 9 is less than 10, we print 9, and then we increment x by 1. So now, x is equal to 10. 
Once x is equal to 10, we come back up and we evaluate the while statement, while x is less than 10. Well, 10 is not less than 10, therefore this while statement is false, and when the while statement is false, it is instructed to ignore the entire block of code underneath it and go to the next line. So it doesn't print anything, it doesn't increment x, in fact it skips to the next line, in this case there isn't one, and the program ends. Indentation in Python is very, very important. Let's go back to the Python shell and our Python windows, and I'll show you why indentation is very important when it comes to blocks of code. In order to demonstrate this concept, I'm going to come over here to the window on the right, my program window, and I'm just going to recreate the program I did in the Python shell. I'm going to initialize x to be a value of 0. I'm going to tell Python that while x is less than 10, I'm going to use my colon for a block of code. I'm going to print x. I'm going to increment x by 1, and that's my entire program. When I execute this program in the window, I'm going to save it as my uh, test.py, and you can see it executes the exact same way this program over here did. At the very end, I'm going to have a print statement here that says, this is the end of the while loop. When I execute this program now, it prints 0 through 9, then prints, this is the end of the while loop. That's because, over here, this block of code is executing continuously as, lo as long as the while statement evaluates to true. If this is true, nothing underneath it will be executed. So this print statement right here never gets executed. The way Python knows that this print statement is not part of the while loop is the indentation. If we were to take this print statement <clears throat> and move it to the bottom of the while statement and run this, you'll see this is the end of the while loop executes each time through. That's because when the while statement evaluates to true, it prints x, it in increments x by 1, then it prints this line. This line right here is part of the the block of code simply because it's spaced in four spaces. By moving it back in line with the while statement, our program is back to normal. Indentation is very important. Simple errors in indentation can cause massive problems in your program. For example, <clears throat> the, the most common way to program in Python is with four spaces. One, two, three, four. If I take this print statement and I indent it five spaces, the next line right here has to be indented five spaces as well. If I put them both indented five spaces, the program executes completely normally. However, if this print statement is indented by five spaces and this x incremented by one statement is, has four spaces, I get an unindent does not match any outer indentation levels. What it's saying is the while statement right here found this print statement with five spaces next to it and then the next line right here is not equal to the while statement, it's not in line with the while statement, and it's not in line with the print statement. This, this little line of code right here is floating out in the middle of nowhere and we don't know what to do with it. Standard Python programming says you indent everything by four spaces, and that's the default. One common way to catch an error is, let's say I'm writing this code down here, when I say while x is less than 10, and I put the colon and hit enter, Python sees the colon and knows that the next line will have to be indented four spaces. If I write this line of code, and I forget the colon at the end, and I hit enter, Python doesn't indent the next line for me. So if you're writing a while statement, if you're writing an if statement, and Python doesn't automatically indent the block for you, you know you probably have some sort of syntax in your code, some kind of syntax error in your code that needs to be addressed. So what you're looking at right here is a block of code. That's everything that is indented. The while statement right here 
as long as it evaluates to true, will continually run over this block of code. When it's done with the block of code, it will go back up and re-execute the while statement, and it will continue doing this until it receives a false value. Once the while statement becomes false, it goes to the next line of code that isn't part of the block. In this case, it's the print statement, and I know it's not part of the block because it is in line with the while statement itself, not directly under the while statement. So think about this logically. Um, we can make a slight change to this program and it will execute completely differently. Right now we're counting from 0 to 9 and then printing this is the end of the while loop. If we simply take this x incremented by 1 and move it on top of the print statement, oh, holy cow, I'm having all kinds of problems tonight, I'm sorry. And I execute this code right here. See, the program counts from 1 to 10, not 0 to 9. The reason is x is initialized to a value of 0. 0 is less than 10, but before it executes this print statement, it increments x by 1. So x is now equal to 1 before we hit the print statement. It gets all the way up to, to 9. 9 is less than 10, so it executes x plus equals 1, which sets x equal to 10. It prints 10. x as a value of 10 now causes the while statement to be false, and it prints, this is the end of the while loop. You will get an error if that colon is missing. That one little colon, if we go to execute this program, we're going to get an invalid syntax error. So if you're seeing an invalid syntax error on the end of a while statement or on the end of an if statement, you're probably missing a colon. Just kind of keep that in mind. The indentation is very important. You'll get in the habit of indenting things properly, but it's a necessary skill. It, it also makes looking at your programs a little bit easier. So I think that's where we're going to go ahead and stop it uh, for lesson 8, or at least lesson 8.1. I still have some more stuff that I want to talk about with the while loops, but we'll get to those in lesson 8.2. In this lesson right here, we wrote a simple while statement incrementing x by 1, looked at blocks of code and indentation and how that stuff works. So that's the framework for the while statement. In lesson 8.2 we're going to take that framework and we're going to do a lot more coding. We're going to write a program that prompts the user to write a number and then the program will check to see if they've guessed a correct number or not and return that information to the user. Either you've guessed the correct number or you haven't. So we're going to look at a practical application of the while loop in lesson 8.2. Then we're going to move on to if statements and at that point you could be a somewhat dangerous pro programmer or you could at least start to think of ideas for what you would want in your programs and write small programs on your own. We are coming up on the first project for the Python tutorial series which is going to be a fully fledged guess the number game. I think we're only a couple lessons away from that and you can also look forward to in the next video, the lesson 8.2 video, you will have a uh, challenge program to see if you've been keeping up on all the material we're at thus far and see if you can write a simple program without any guidance. As always, if you have any questions about this lesson or any Python programs that you're writing, you need help with this or you need some additional clarification, just uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will definitely respond and help you out any way that I can. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.